I haven't really got anything else to say right now, so Drew, over to you. Oh, time for the kids to go as well. Kids, off you go, go follow Sophie. Go and have fun. <laughs> Can you hear me at the back of the cheap seats? <laughs> I'll pick on you at the back. <laughs> oh, okay. And the cheap seats are the expensive seats the front would have like to see. Morning guys, my name's Drew. Morning. How are you? Drew. Good. I'm sorry it's Sunday, Saturday. It's Saturday, Sunday. I have no idea what day it is. <laughs> I went to California the three weeks ago and my body clock's going, is it then, is it now? I have no idea. <laughs> Apart from Kathy said, are you still coming? And I was like, oh, it's next week. I'm going to do some work. I'm only joking. This has been ready for about hours. <laughs> Crikey, better get that done. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, I'm in trouble. <laughs> now, we're talking on Jeremiah, aren't we? Is that right? <laughs> no, <laughs> Old Testament. <laughs> like, oh, I hope not. <laughs> and Kathy's like, I'm in <laughs> Anyway, thank you for having me. It's, um, it's a privilege to get up early on a Saturday night. <laughs> Alice. <laughs> And if you'd have heard what she who must be obeyed said this morning when the alarm clock went off, you'd be even more pleased to know that I arrived safe and sound. And <laughs> I may not be the same in the morning, <laughs> Sunday. So, what on earth is that all about? Any ideas? What are we here for? Thank you. <laughs> there we go. To be honest, when I got out of the car, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I felt like Homer Simpson, but without the dough. <laughs> I was like, well, been making the scene. <laughs> yes. So, what did you do yesterday evening? The greatest commandment. The greatest commandment of all is. Love of God. It is. Yeah. Love your heart. With all your mind, your soul, and your strength. And then I, apparently, I'm going to do something about your neighbours. As long as you haven't got conifers, that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> There's a sermon in that one. You know what I mean? <laughs> I have, I'm a scout, so I have a terrible sense of humour. So if you want to leave now, please do. <laughs> and if you don't, that's fine. Complaints put on a sticky down envelope and send them to Kathy, and she'll forward them on a later date. <laughs> and we'll meet in Costa and, can, and cry together. <laughs> so we're, all, we're looking at our neighbours. Um, Am I allowed to use the other bit as our sound? Thank goodness for that, because otherwise I'm hardly halfway there. <laughs> love our neighbours as ourselves. So Bishop Matthew hopefully started off with love God. And love our neighbours as ourselves. We do it, I, put, I found this because I thought it's great, because if we don't do it together, there's going to be a hole, isn't there? We've all got this Jesus-shaped hole inside us that... If we don't allow God to fill, we're kind of running on empty. So a little bit about me, my name's Drew, I spent 14 years in prison. Um, God called me into ministry and went, right, let's get sorted out, let's get you done, let's get you dusted and let's get on with life. And I went, yes, bring it on. I'll tell you a bit more about me later. However, next slide please. My, my good man. <laughs> Love your neighbour as yourself. What does it mean? It's an interactive forum, so what does it mean to love your neighbour? As yourself. Yeah, but sometimes we don't like ourselves, no. do we? <laughs> That's really tough. I look in the mirror and go, has somebody been to the fun fair and got one of those mirrors? Because I see a short, fat, balding bloke in the mirror this morning. I look down as tall, dark and handsome, but there you go. You're complaining about your hair you've got. Hey, this, <laughs> you use that wash and go. I, mine's like the white. If you look at this, my solar panel here, it's the same shape as her thumb. I try to start with the first time, all the time. Everywhere I go. So what is it? Look your neighbour as it. What does that mean? Fun. Can, yeah. Just care for others. Yeah. Time. I like that one. Do something. Time, do something, be kind. Listen. 
It's interactive because I will start picking on the cheap seats. <laughs> 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 There's that problem, isn't there? Do you want to others as you would do? Have them to yourself. Yeah. Swatch. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, it's fine. Find, <laughs> so find, find out what their needs are. Oh. Yeah. And it's difficult because, I mean, I used to, I, I was brought up in a council estate where we had nothing and then I moved all over the place and then we moved into a, a, a very, very affluent area and the church had millions of pounds in the bank and on the surface everything was great, we were dead, we were rich, but would they spend any of the money? No. No! The needs were massive. Because they were all living with, I'm going to beat you. My car's better than your car, my house bigger than your house. <laughs> yeah, but they have more debt than a third world country. But you had to knock the barriers down to get into what was the need. And the need was time. How are you doing? What's going on in your life? How are you? No! Because oh. we always go, oh, I'm fine. I'm all right, mate. What was that? We're not all right. None of us are all right. We've just come out of two years of, I'm going to use the word, hell, haven't we? And some of us are still going there. We're still journeying. So, I'm going to play a song. Well, I'm not going to play a song, as a, a guy's going to sing us a song. And the words in the song are quite important for us to listen to. And then I'll get into what I think I want to say. There's a few pictures going to come up. And I want you to, when you see the third the picture, I want you to say, think what your first initial response would be. <laughs> Could you love this guy? Yes. No. Yes, no. Okay. Maybe. Next one. Still love this guy. Yeah, no. 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 Next one. This lady. No. Next one. Yes. yes. Next one. <laughs> oh, we're we'll having to think about that chat. <laughs> okay, so five pictures, five different people. The first guy, Russian, Russian Orthodox priest. He was arrested in prison for filming sex attacks on children. Does it change your mind on who he is? Now you know a bit about him. Second guy, Clayton Fountain, mass murderer in America, gave his life to God, and after his death was posthumously accepted as a monk. The third person, Nadia Bowlesweather, Weber. She's a Lutheran pastor in America. She's <laughs> fabulous. I wouldn't highly recommend if you're easily offended listening to any of her talks because she does swear like a trooper. I just have to tone my stuff down today because I don't want to upset anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Number four, Jack Twig said two and a half year sentence for reckless driving and he killed his girlfriend with a head on the collision. But he's now a branch manager with Timpsons. Because Timpsons work with prisoners and they have workshops in Category C prisons to train them, to give them a second chance. And number five, any idea who this chap is? 
It's in the iglesia. No. Black folks vote too. Oh, don't be <laughs> yourself, you. We'll fall out in a minute. <laughs> this guy is called Ashley Atwood. He was a solicitor. Say he was, because he's just been struck up. He has sexually assaulted a woman in Tippenset. Just up the road. I used to go to my wife's church. He was actually sat in my house while the investigation was going on. Now, when I said before I've been in prison for 14 years, I actually worked in prison for 14 years, so don't worry, so you can all find out in the acts, and you can all stop checking your pockets and your bags for your wallets and stuff, and, you know, your alley wheels will still be on your car when you go outside, because I've got guys full of them anyway. <laughs> it's fine. Okay. But it's the weird thing was, he went to the prison I worked in first, while well, he was went under before he was sentenced. And we had to sat I and luckily during COVID masks are were great. Because I sat there going, Holy morning, all our hands. <laughs> he was in such a state because he thought I'm a solicitor, I'm gonna get away with this. Oh no. Five and a half years was a bit of a shock. As you can imagine. Luckily, I went, you can't, he, I, I, either he has to go, or I go, because I can't do my job with somebody that's been in my house, knows my wife, knows my kids, because he, he used to take his child to my wife's messy church, and has sat in my house, and I pastored him. So they shifted him out. Did I stop loving him? No. Hard, isn't it? Hard what we see, how our assumptions against what we see outside. Assumptions when untested become barriers, and barriers when unchallenged become walls, and walls when intact become reality. Assumptions were quite some time ago that it said it couldn't be done that it was physically impossible. <coughs> Hundreds, even thousands had tried it, but no one was successful. In fact, they'd even got a place where they were so convinced it couldn't be done, academic papers had been written on it about the physical barriers that prevent this event, this physical feat to take place that everyone thought and throughout society they were convinced it would never, ever happen. <coughs> but over 60 plus years ago now, a medical student named Roger Bannister ran the three mile in under three minutes, three, under four minutes, three minutes and 59 seconds. And prior to that, everyone was convinced that the four minute mile could not be broken. Sir Roger's record lasted just 45 days when an Australian runner named John Landy ran the mile in 3 minutes and 58 seconds and since then it's estimated over 2,000 runners have beat the 4 minute mile. You see assumptions when untested become barriers and barriers when unchallenged become walls and walls when they've left untacked become reality. The same can be true about the sound barrier until 1947 when a pilot named Chuck Yeager in an airplane called Glamorous, Glamorous <coughs> that's right, <laughs> broke the sound barrier. And 50 years later, an RAF pilot named Andy Green broke the sound barrier in a like me. car. Oh. Mad! But assumptions, when untested, become barriers. And barriers when unchallenged become walls, and walls when left intact become reality. And I suppose it's okay and even acceptable when physical feats or athletic feats or even engineering feats. But the problem comes when those assumptions become barriers, become walls, become reality, are made about other people or even ourselves. And that's the danger, isn't it? So when I said to you guys before, I've been in prison for 14 years, what was your first initial response? Be honest. 
Because I always leave that little nugget hanging and then I go, oh, that's it. <laughs> so be honest with me, what was your first initial response? I was waiting for your testimony. Might disappoint us now. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was telling you get me some weed. <laughs> I can and I'll see you later. <laughs> For medication purposes, oh, this is being recorded. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's not live stream because I'm doing it. Surprise, surprise. <coughs> See, lots of people who go, oh, he's got tattoos, he must have been in prison. <laughs> they do. Honestly, they go, oh, he's got tattoos, he's been in prison before. Oh, what a terrible tattoos. They don't have vicars with tattoos, do they? I used to ride a motorbike until I had a brain mess, my brain messed up. Covid did that to me. That's another story. So I'd have been great if I'd have turned up on my big motorbike here and gone off and you'd have opened up. What's this? Who's this? Because I did. I used to go parish ministry and he'd be like, oh, you're the vicar. And I'd be like, hi, guys. How are you doing? Like, yes. Because it's not a barrier. There's been barriers up because people are like, you shouldn't be like that. I should be having an old bicycle with a basket on me. Bling, bling. i love to see Matt riding up the hill on this bicycle. <laughs> <laughs> but the Bible is pretty clear on what we should do. Love God with all your heart, your mind and strength, and love your neighbour as yourself. The hard bit is loving your neighbour as yourself, because most of the time we don't actually like ourselves, which is, as a bloke, I can say that because most of the time I kind of, mm, me and myself have a bit of a healthy battle, shall we say. <laughs> so, how many times do you think it tells us to love our neighbour in the Bible? A lot. Oh, oh, come on, I <laughs> Can we move into the cheap seats? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> any any advances on a lot? <laughs> More than once. Well, that's a, that's a start. <laughs> More than once on a lot. 50. 50, right. <sighs> Anyone? <laughs> that's all right. Anyone else? We cover to cover. <laughs> cover to cover. It's not that many, and it's not that many, and it's a few less than a lot. <laughs> You'd be surprised. Oh, it tells us 18 times. I know. Any idea when God first tells us to love our neighbour? In creation? Don't kill each other. Wouldn't it be Jesus? No, no, no. Genesis. What is it? In creation, Genesis, Deuteronomy, Jesus. Yes! Gold star and the chocolate lava. Right? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Place from will be That's a solid answer. Yeah. Yeah. Blankety, blankety. Oh, <laughs> it is Leviticus, the, the old Pentateuch, as we know, the third book of Moses, written between 538 and 332 BC. Most of the chapters from 1 to 7, Yahweh's speeches to Moses, where Yahweh commands Moses to repeat to the Israelites. That's where it starts. Lawlessness. Nobody has a clue what to do because they're all finding the feet. And I always like to think of the Old Testament and when God interrupts and speaks through people, it's like, you know, we used to do the potato prints with paint, and God starts it off with a nice big bit of paint, and he goes, Dum! and then he goes through. And then all of a sudden he has to inter intercede with people, so he dips it in the paint and then he goes, Moses, you need to, someone needs to start, and I'm going to intercede here and tell you what we need to do. Because you made a mess. So he tells them, love your neighbour. The problem was, instructions in Leviticus were ritual, legal and moral practices rather than beliefs. 
Because if he ever gets to Leviticus, if he can ever read all of Leviticus, Matthew, Matt will give you a thousand pounds out of his own pocket, <laughs> right? And a chocolate lollipop and a gold star on your star chart. Because no one can get through it. Because by the time you get halfway, you want to beat yourself up with your own leg. It is <laughs> full of rules and regulations of what you can and can't do. And you're like, huh? If this is what it's about, kill me now. It's terrible. But it's because there was nothing. There was no rules, no regulations. And then man made it all about you have to follow the rip. It's a ritual thing. And it was dreadful. Speak to all the congregation of people of Israel and say to them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. He goes on to what he expects the Israelites to do with the harvest, the Sabbath, and in verse 18 he says, You shall not take vengeance, nor bear grudge against any of your people, for you shall love your neighbour as yourself. I am the Lord. And then he reiterates it again in chapter, in verse 38. He's giving you all the laws, giving you all the rules and regulations, and then he says, but oh, love your neighbour, because I love you. This much! And uh, we'll get on to that much in a minute. And then Moses again in Deuteronomy 10, you shall love the stranger. <clears throat> For you were strangers in the land of Egypt. Love the stranger. Can't get any stranger than me. <laughs> but how do we do that? Time. Care. Find out what they need. That's the tough one, because we're all like an onion. The more we peel, the harder it gets, the more tears there are, the more pain it releases, the more stuff we've got to do, the more patience it takes. And we don't go, don't take, I'm all right, as your first, great, see you later, or no, not. I met a bloke once, a first, First, within the first couple of weeks I started in prison, it was brilliant, so the one I'm making and now, and he's about four foot in the five packet, this fella, and he comes up and he says, hey, father, Irish guy, I said, yes, he says, February the 14th, I'm coming to chapel, I said, no problem, that's fine, so I was like, what for, I want to light a candle, it's not really well top, I'm like, okay, so February the 14th, he's there, knocks on the door, can I come in, I want to light a candle, so I'm like, okay, so, Sat there, and I want to say some prayers. So we said some prayers, and he says, uh, I said, Is this uh, anniversary of anything called it special? He said, Oh, yes, it's the anniversary. I said, like, oh, it's, You know, I'm thinking this is lovely. It's the anniversary, what? It's the anniversary of my first murder. Well, <laughs> 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 oh, I never did. <laughs> I said, um, He first. He said, Oh, yes, but there'll be plenty more coming later in the year, Father. So don't worry, you'll get used to seeing me out throughout the year. So I was like, That's, that's interesting. So as the as the time goes by, it turns out that this guy is an IRA terrorist. But I just saw him as a four foot and a five packet little fella, and we have we actually we have a hoot. I have no interest in what he's done because he's just a bloke that was following orders. He's a Roman Catholic. And I'm the other side. <laughs> <laughs> and I keep going, you're the dark side, so I'm the right. I see that, you know, we're the reformed Catholic church. Oh, Barney, you're terrible, you are. And if we were outside, we'd be kicking it out of each other. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Because it doesn't matter, because I love you with this agape love that God loves me. How can you do that, Father, with everything I've done in the past? I said, because. I forgive you because God forgave me and God forgives you. You have got to forgive yourself. Oh, I can't do that. So it can't all right. 
bored and going, oh, listen, that's the problem. We can't forgive ourselves. Why? Because we're men and stupid and driving uh, nuts. So we sat and we sit every week, me and Billy, it's not his name, and we talk about faith. And so, because I was brought up in a Roman Catholic household, my grandma was Italian, so you can't get any higher up the candle than that. And she had a red phone next to the chair where she sat, and every time she'd sit me, she'd say, I phoned the Pope. And I'd be like, Oh, no, phone the Pope. And she dragged me 1982 to Liverpool Airport when the Pope arrived with the other 100,000 nutters <laughs> to see a man in a white thing with a thing on his head, driving around Liverpool in a Land Rover. Don't know what that was all about when I was that age. Great party, but, but that's what people did. But what was it about? How did we love each other when we were there? It was chaos. How did we have the relationship? How do I have a relationship with Billy and all the other 1,100 men that I look after? Muslims. Pagans, Christians, Jews. This week I've had a man, a man of many hats. How do you love your neighbour next door when you've got comic was so big you can't see the lights of the day and your electricity bill so up because you've got to have the lights on? We've all got something in common. We're all spiritual beings trying to work out what's going on in this crazy world we live in. We all do. We've just got to work out how to do it. Most of the time, it's this. How do you do it? Alright? And then you say nothing. Because genuine interest says nothing. Because if you can't sit with genuine interest in silence and make someone feel comfortable, that's when the conversation starts. Because that person in front of you then, hopefully, feels like they're the most important person, most important thing in your time at that moment. Because that's what people don't get. Do they? Do we? How many times have we, we're too busy, we've got our phone. I love that scudgy up. <coughs> I do. Well, how many kids do we see, parents, phone on their ear like that, pushing a buggy, kid snot running down its face, sausage roll, back of crisps, screaming at it, you know, and stuff. I've seen it before. Step, sorry, being stereotypical, but that's what happens. And, but how do you talk to them? The New Testament comes along Matthew, Mark, Luke, the Romans, Galatians, all in there reminding us to love your neighbour. The least, the lost, and broken in society, the ones that don't look like us. Don't talk like us, don't talk proper like I do. <laughs> Duck. <laughs> I throw that down again when I'm in Stoke and I'm like, you stop it, that's our lingo. <laughs> Someone said duck once, I was like, no, no, that's it. I need to get used to that. <laughs> the ones that don't smell like us, I often meet the lads in the first night, that's one of our jobs in prison. First night, they come in that night before we go and see them the next morning. I'm really disappointed we don't have to wear masks anymore, because that was a blessing. <laughs> as you can imagine, have the same standards as us. Those are the ones that Jesus calls us to love. He hung out with the lepers, the prostitutes, the bleeding women, those with evil spirits in them, the tax collectors. <laughs> he chose them. Why did he choose them? Because those are his lost sheep. Those are the ones no one wanted to look after. 
the ones we walk past. Supermarkets are my favourite hunting ground. I love going to the supermarket. And you're there. Do, do, do. I always have one ear thing in because if I see someone I don't want to know, they'll worry quick. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got anything on because I don't want to drain my battery, but I always win. <laughs> and then you get, you inevitable get to the supermarket checkout, and there's always, normally, a toddler having a breakdown. <laughs> or, isn't it? You know, no matter what time of day you go, or having a breakdown in an aisle. It used to be one of my four, and I'm like, <laughs> and I always say to the mum, you're doing a great job. Don't worry about it. And the relief often is like you're taking all the aggro and the shame that they feel like their kids playing up and throwing stuff everywhere. And I say, you know what, more often than not, that's how I want to behave in here. <laughs> <laughs> and I apologise for anyone that has one of those lovely shopping tarts and bags of wheeled. Because <laughs> they're my favourite people that put them in the middle of the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going, excuse me. And they want to ignore you while they go zip, 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 zip. And then back to the shop. <laughs> Because we're supposed to know that it. When you say to a mum whose child is having an absolute meltdown, you're doing a great job, it's okay. That's showing love. That's loving your neighbour. If you've ever had children, you may, you know what it's like. If you haven't, do it. Because how many times do we want to have a meltdown in the supermarket? <laughs> we do. Covid was brilliant. Wasn't it? We had stickers on the floor, signs up, move up and down, up. Now, it's like the M25. <laughs> but if you've ever been to France around the Arc de Triomphe, forget it. If you've ever been in Italy, it's nuts. And if you ever want to watch something completely bonkers, watch anything on YouTube about the roads in India, it's like that. It's everybody everywhere, isn't it? You go into any supermarket and there's no etiquette whatsoever because we don't we don't we're british we'll queue up for hours in a straight line but will we go shopping in an ordinary fashion no <laughs> because we get halfway down the shop we think oh i forgot the butter i bring down the milk aisle so you turn around and you go against everyone <laughs> after the book because that's what i need <laughs> And you don't think I know how to roll it, how to roll it. Sensibly, we don't. So practice loving your neighbour in the supermarket. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they're doing the reduction thing and it's all kicking off at the bottom. <laughs> Brilliant! But that's what we need to do. We need to find out how do we do it. Go so first thing in the morning and the last thing at night because there's no one else there. It's brilliant. And then you don't have a meltdown and you don't have to engage with other people. I'm only joking. But that's what we have to find out. As God's people, how do we love our neighbour as ourselves? Because a lot of the time we really don't like ourselves. If we're really, really honest. Because it's difficult to like yourself. Because we. See all the advertising. We see all the things, don't we, on the TV. I bought some Calvin Klein boxer shorts once because I wanted to look like David Beckham. <laughs> I did. I thought, if I have some Calvin Klein boxer shorts and wear that Davidoff aftershave, I'll have a six pack. It looked like a mushroom, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> it was awful. I, I couldn't swim and I was never going to dive off a beach like off a, off a cliff like that. It was never going to work. <laughs> but we get told all the all our society, all advertising, tell us that we've got to look like this, we've got to behave like this, and we've got to smell like that, and we've got to wear this particular thing because we're going to look good. And it's like, really? But how does that make me any different than... Because we're supposed to be different. We're supposed to behave 
in a different way. We're supposed to speak into that stuff. We're supposed to go, no, what are you, what are you doing? But that takes courage, doesn't it? We're afraid, aren't we, to, to share our faith, share our testimony, aren't we? If we're honest, we are. Most of the time, you want people to go, what is it about you? There's something about you that's different. What is it? Because that's what we should be doing. When we're in work, when we're at our clubs, when we're going shopping, when we're interacting with other people, when we're not cussing and shouting at our kids, when we're not <clears throat> things at people in the car and stuff. You want people to go, what is it about you? And that's the hook. Because they assume and this is what grates me. They assume that we're all going to pick up one of these. Goodbye, we're not going to go. I'm going to go around and we're going to go. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Bible basher. I've never known anyone to do that to be effective. <laughs> I've met a few of them in prison because that's a song. Right? But I've, I've never found a Bible big enough. Right, that is big enough and light enough to cause any permanent damage. <coughs> that is small enough to conceal that you can whip it out. <laughs> and then go, ha! Because <laughs> it's not. This is just a guidebook. It guides us. I love saying to my guys in prison Bible, basic instructions before leaving Earth. <laughs> I got that, yeah? Because I. Uh, I thought it was do's and don'ts. I said, well, there's a few of them in there, you know, common sense. But it's an instruction manual. It helps us, it guides us, it teaches us. I love this bit. This is one of my favourite chapters. There's, there's two, or, two or three, but this one. When the evening came, he arrived with the twelve. And while they were reclining and eating, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and to say to him, one by one, Surely not I. He said to them, It is one of the twelve. The one who is dipping bread in the bowl with me. For the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. He didn't stop loving him. I mean, we know <laughs> the story. He didn't stop Jesus loving him. So if Jesus can love the person unconditionally that he knew was going to betray him, why can't we unconditionally love our neighbours? Hmm. Are we afraid to? Do we not have the courage to step out and do that? Or do we not know, not sure how to engage the first question? That's often the harbor, isn't it? How do we share our faith with somebody that they're kind of like, I'm really scared, I don't know what to say. Because <laughs> <laughs> I found the end is nigh, you're all going to burn in hell unless you come to faith. I find those kind of creatures kind of like nutter. <laughs> Love them to bits, but mm, that's not going to work. Yeah, what does that mean? The end is now. I have no idea. I'm still trying to find that bit. Or, how do you do it? 
which is going to work better? How are you? Because that's the love that God gave us. That's the love that Jesus shared with everybody that he went with and he hung out with. And he didn't care who it was. He didn't look and go, oh, excuse me, um, can you tell me your qualifications? Can you tell me if you've been good and you followed the 639 rules in Leviticus? <laughs> and you followed in all, the, uh, all the rituals as well. Uh, and by the way, I came into your house and you didn't give me anything to wash yourself with, so I'm not hanging with you. But Mary, she was all right, because she put some oil on me and perfume, so I smelled really nice now. So I'll hang with her instead. He turned it on them, didn't he? In a way that made people reflect on themselves. And oh, I don't know, I missed something. Because if I can't do it for the least of these, one of my favourite scriptures, Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon me to release the captives, to give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, heal the heartbroken. Everybody in this world has been touched by COVID. Everybody. Everybody's got a, a story to tell. Everybody's heart has been broken by something. We need to find out how do we get in there. Share your own stories. It's not difficult. I often walk around without a collar. In prison where I work, I wear brightly coloured flowery shirts with a collar. And I'm like, what the? Because everyone's like, what's he going to wear next? Because <laughs> I don't want to be Dr. Death in black all the time. Here he comes. Dr. Death's arrived. Because that's what they expect. Now and again, I'll put a black shirt on. Freaks them out. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing? My wife's like, just put one on just now and again, so at least they know you're the priest. And I'm like, okay, you're not going on some Hawaiian beach. No, oh, go on, man. Because it's about spending time, knocking the barriers down, spending time with people, because that's what Jesus did. He didn't care what people looked like. He didn't care what they'd done. He didn't care about the past. He cared about them right there, right there, and said, just forget about that. Didn't he? He created new stuff out of nothing. When we were at our lowest, he went, Come on. That's how you love your neighbour. Have you got the courage to do it? Has anyone seen Indiana Jones, the films? Yeah. yeah? If you haven't, you need to watch all of them because I can't remember which one it is. <laughs> but one of the films, he's got to go and find the, uh, is it, what's wrong with the cup? Yeah, Holy, Grail. Yeah. Holy Grail. Yeah. Indiana Jones and Holy Grail. He's got to go find a cup and he's got his dad's book and he's going through his dad's book to find this thing and he gets to all these challenges and it's brilliant and it's like the penitent pan and he, he, he's got to say, he's got to spell Yahweh and he's like, ah, but in the original it's, and he stands on Jane and he goes, no, it's going to twine and, and then he gets to a place and there's a bridge. Well, there isn't a bridge. And there's a gap between here and getting the other side. And there's a chasm, and he looks down and he's like, I'm not going to get down there. And as he takes a step out, you can hear the pebbles falling and falling and falling. He's like, and it opens the book and it says, Leap of faith. And he stood there and he's like, There's nothing there. And he's like, and as he puts his foot out, this bridge appears, and he walks across. That's what we've got to do. We've got to have faith in ourselves and in God, what he's put inside us, to take that step. To reach out to those that God's called us to love, which is our neighbour. But we not on our own. Tomorrow, I will hope you will take communion and you will all come together as one big family 
around his table and will share in his bread and his wine because you can't do it on your own. Jesus didn't do it on his own. The disciples didn't do it on their own. So we can't do it on our own. We've just got to trust. We've got to have faith. So we're going to be breaking, is it now? We're going to break now, because I've spoken at you for a bit. And then when we come back, I'll tell you what I would like you. I would, no, I'm going to ask you if you would like to. I'm going to tell anyone, because I know we want to get told and that she must be obeyed. And, <laughs> and then now we're going to do as I'm told. Um, and then I'm going to suggest that we do something throughout the rest of the day. So, have a break. Tea, coffee, cake, cake, and death by cake. <laughs> because it's an angry church. And if there's no fruit cake, I will throw a party. <laughs> so, if the shop's open, there isn't any someone better get down there quick. I'm only joking, but it's fine. There's bound to be. And thank you for listening. Stop and ask me any questions. And we'll have questions anyway later on because I will put on the cheap seats at the back. <laughs> And the front of the middle. <laughs> Enjoy your break. And I'll see you back in six minutes. I'm only joking. How long? <laughs> Half past. Yeah. So you've got plenty of time. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>